Hi guys, Vex here, and on this episode of Vex's Test World, I want to talk to you about player sensors. That's right. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about this, and I finally can talk about them because I've been waiting until I get to the point in my Spellbound Caves developer commentary uh, where I start using them in that map. And I wanted to make a Vex's Test World video. Uh, as a companion to my developer commentary. And so I'm finally there and uh, now I get to talk about these, these player sensors. Uh, the first thing about the design that I came up with that you'll notice immediately is it's this right here. Um, on the left uh, on the left right here we have the actual model and then on the right is a cutaway view where you can see the payload, all the TNT inside and all the internal mechanisms. Uh, the first thing you'll notice if you're already familiar with player sensors, and if you're not familiar with them, I'll cover the basics too, so don't worry, is that it's pretty big, uh, and there's a, there's a reason for that, and it's because the common design, uh, as like, um, like the one, a lot of people have made them, but I know, I know for, for a fact that Etho uh, did a video I think he was one of the first people to uh, make a video about them, uh, but a lot of people have uh, come up with the uh, basic design of a player sensor, which is a monster spawner and then a pressure plate. And you'll notice I'm keeping my distance from those two over there, uh, and that's for a very good reason, uh, which I'll show you. Um, I got, on, on Super Hostile Legendary and a few of my maps before that, I got burned pretty bad with unstable traps going off uh, prematurely and a lot of players would get to an area and find a crater where a trap had triggered prematurely because of monsters spawning inside the internal mechanisms of the trap and activating things. <clears throat> or in one case it was actually snow. Uh, legendary there's an area where there's like the tip of a snow biome that causes snow to fall and the snow forms on the ground and updates a block, which is not supposed to happen without the player being there, and uh, causes the trap to trigger. So here's the common uh, design, just basic player sensor that uses the distance to a monster spawner. Uh, the monsters spawn inside this little box here, and they stand on a pressure plate. Now this design is unstable for two reasons and I am on peaceful right now and it's unstable on peaceful and it's also very unstable on uh, easy and above and I'll show you what's wrong with the peaceful version is that I've taken the I've taken the pressure plate off of this one but it's the pressure plate is actually on this one here and even on peaceful the creepers will spawn and then immediately be deleted but they still count as being here and what's going to happen is, i put the pressure plate, this one, uh, hold on a sec, um, let's see, weather sun, there we go. Even on a peaceful difficult, yep, there it goes, I was waiting. So that sensor, even on uh, peaceful difficulty, will trigger. Now that actually might be, if, if this is what you're going for, um, a peaceful mode proximity detector. This actually works for peaceful mode. If you're making a peaceful mode adventure map or something, and you can do something like this, and I'll just get up here. Uh, here's the basic design with the wall cut away. The, uh, and let me get, where's the redstone at? There it is. You have monster spawners. I like to use creepers because they're silent and you have a, a simple pressure plate, they spawn inside this box, trigger the pressure plate, and then you can use that to detonate TNT, you can send out a uh, redstone signal, you know, whatever you want to do, um, and have it activate whatever kind of mechanism you can, you can dream up. But you just saw how this design is unstable on peaceful difficulty, because creeper spawns and even though they only exist for a fraction of a second before peaceful mode deletes them, it's still long enough to trigger that pressure plate. 
So if you want a peaceful mode proximity sensor, you know, that's fine. The other reason uh, this common design is unstable is because on non-peaceful difficulties, let's just turn on easy, monsters will spawn inside the trap mechanism. And if you look out here, that's it. Okay, yeah, it's all normal. Uh, here's my design over here. These big, these larger ones. Uh, these are 100% stable, as far as my tests go. There's one detonating right there. And without getting close enough, we'll have um, monsters spawning inside of these and setting them off. There goes a second one. And this is only. This has been less than a minute. Uh, imagine an adventure map where the player is spending, you know, hours walking around, you know, before there goes a third one, before he gets to the area where the proximity sensor is, it will already have gone off. Now, if it's uh, attached to pistons or doors or something like that, that's resettable, that's not as big of a deal especially if you have a piston to suffocate the monster inside and reset it. But if it's a bomb of some kind and it's T the TNT is only going to be going off once, then this is a huge problem. Uh, there is another one. So as you can see, they're, they're blowing up uh, maybe once at a rate of maybe one every 10 seconds. So eventually on an, uh, an adventure map, there goes another one. These This design is going to, you know, be set off prematurely by wild monsters spawning inside the uh, trap mechanic, uh, trap mechanism. So, for me, one of the most important qualities in a trap or mechanism to use in a super hostile map is stability. If it's not 100% stable, I don't even want to bother with it because it's going to go off before the player even gets to it of it and you know, the player's just going to walk up and find a crater in the ground. Okay, so let's fly back over here, and I will talk about my stable design. Let's let's fly a little bit faster. Whee! Oh, and if you notice, here's all the... Uh, I copied and pasted my design a bunch of times here. And Evo was also actually pretty interested in this. I sent this schematic to him. Uh, and I think he's probably... He's probably going to improve upon it. Uh, I actually have an idea to improve upon this, but I will get to that in a later video. I'm getting way too a uh, ahead of myself. Um, but these don't ever de uh, prematurely detonate. They will only detonate if the player gets close enough to the spawners to actually set them off properly. So let's come back over here, and we can fly. We can fly slow now. <clears throat> Here's a cutaway view of, this is, uh, I call it the proximity bomb, because that's basically what it is. It's, you get close to it, it blows up. It doesn't have to blow up. You can remove, I can remove the TNT and just have it be a player sensor. And inside, and this is the key, it's very, this is actually brutally simple. Um, the player gets close these creepers spawn, and this is entirely based around the fact that monster spawners will spawn their monsters in midair. Naturally spawn monsters will never spawn in midair. They always must spawn on dark ground. And I'm going to do time day again to keep the brightness up here. So what you do is, and you can make your own design of this, it's, it's really basic, it's just have elevated monster spawners up in the air and then have the ground down here where the pressure pads are uh, be illuminated. And I've cut this away for you to see, but inside this is what they're actually falling down into. So they can fall onto the glowstone here. That's not a huge deal uh, because they'll they'd like to fidget around. And, oh wait, is that actually closed up? Let me go on this one. Okay, no, it's not. You actually could close this up. Oh, no, you can't. No, you can't. I'm stupid. Wait, wait. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. You could actually improve this and make it instantaneous by doing this, I think. 
Okay. Like something like that. Um, yeah. And now the surface here is still illuminated and there's no uh, area here for them to spawn and fall down on. So you could do that too. But uh, let me get rid of this again just because... And I use the stone pressure plates so that items don't accidentally set the thing off. Now, also, this right here is a simple... Uh, none of this is, you know, really that complicated. It's just basic redstone mechanics combined. And here you have a vertical transmission tower. The redstone, the pressure plate sends signal to these wires here. Uh, that cuts this torch off, causes a chain reaction that transmits the signal all the way up here. And the reason I did this was because TNT does not always reliably detonate straight up. So the detonation goes off uniformly, and I'm guaranteed that these TNT up here will detonate. Because if I was starting the uh, TNT exploding from down here, it's possible that there would be no ch that the chain reaction might stop you know maybe halfway up and then I'd be left with these TNT and the spawners intact but this this bomb is rigged up to destroy itself it will not leave spawners it won't leave TNT uh, very little very little if any redstone or redstone torches will be left because of the um, chain reaction blast destroying all the items uh, so this is this is great for denying the player resources and making sure they don't have access to you know like a creeper uh, creeper farm and turning this into a grinder and also it has output areas to also send if I ever want to transmit the redstone pulse from the detonation to other mechanisms such as a TNT cannon to call in a TNT strike on your location in addition to the proximity bomb going off, because, you know, if you want to have a whole battery of TNT cannons opening up and shooting at you, I think that's kind of cool. So yeah, so this is this is pretty much it. It's really simple. It's really, really simple. And it's 100% stable. You can use this in your adventure map, this kind of design. And all you need to do is just have monster spawners up top, monsters fall, have some light down at the bottom to stop natural spawning, and there you go, that's it. The only bad thing is that they do need to fall, and the light level must be low enough up in this top part, which is why it needs to be elongated, and it's a, it's kind of, it's kind of bulky. I have a plan, I have an idea, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna work but I'll get to it in another video, that can have a proximity sensor that's this compact that uh, is also 100% stable. That's, that's, that would be a nice goal to work towards. And I'm pretty sure I can pull it off, but uh, I'll leave that for another video. So that's it. A 100% stable... Uh, self uh, self deleting i guess you could say leaves no evidence behind leaves no resources behind uh, proximity sensor and you can use this for causing cinematic effects where if a player gets in an area you can trigger events to happen such as cave-ins uh, things like that or you can use it just as a trap because if the player does get close enough to this they're going to have a lot of tnt flying around and it's pretty dangerous and in the time I've been talking, it looks like even more of these have uh, prematurely detonated. Oh, oh yeah, I guess I should probably show off these things actually going off on their own. So for that, we need to fly a little bit faster. And let's see, make sure it's on normal. Now I think some light may be coming in through the sides here. So just let me cover up these... Uh, output ports. Now, 
these are designed obviously to be placed up oh, there it goes already so there you go that uh, it totally just blows itself up and it leaves behind very little resources there's one piece of redstone here and that's it and it does a really good job of just totally destroying itself so that you can deny players any resources and let's, let's do another one just uh rain again seriously i hate my test my test world always rains like every five minutes like clockwork it rains and it's infuriating Oh, that one left a uh, one block. And did it leave any redstone? I don't see any. So that one left no redstone, but one block was missing. So TNT, uh, TNT is, you know, by nature pretty chaotic. And the results will be just slightly different each time. And I hate weather. Sun, please. Thank you, single player commands. Actually, you know what? Let me just do time night, and we will have no more no more light coming in from the output ports. Oh, now, right there is one problem. If you leave these out in the open and they're not buried inside, you know, the wall of a cave or fortress or whatever it is you're making. If you just leave them out, the creepers can spawn uh, farther away. So to stop this, you would just come in and, and place blocks and block off the area for them to spawn in. Alternatively, uh, you could just come in. Where's my? There we go. You could just do this. And that should... It's kind of a silly way of doing it. If the player sees one of these just sitting out in the open with a bunch of torches stuck on it, they're going to be... Well, I don't know. They might they might come come forward and investigate it. So now the only place... Oh, there they go. Okay, that was another complete destruction. There's a little bit of stone left down at the base. I see one redstone. So, it, yeah, it, uh, the player might get one redstone from this design. You can always just put more TNT if you wanted to stop that. And let me go back to peaceful here and go back to daytime here. Time day. So I think I've shown off everything uh, about this design. It's bulky. And, but it's 100% stable, which is why I love it. Because uh, stability, like I said, is my number one priority. I hate seeing you know, traps that I make go off prematurely. Uh, but next video, you can look forward to, uh, next Vex's Test World video is probably going to be either me posting the successful design of a very compact, 100% stable player proximity detector, or I will post my uh, not successful design and then explain what's wrong with it. And maybe uh, maybe one of you guys can, can come up with something better and help me fix it. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be stable. Anyway, uh, this, is already, this video is already going, going on for a bit, so I will cut it here. And thank you very much for watching, and I hope you learned something.